Oh, man. It's just another five weeks or so before Colorado Festival of Horror. How did it? This is Kofa Live, and again, I am here with Monique Dupree and Anthony St. Thomas. Oh! It's great to see you, and and you've got your daughter. Yeah, who is this lovely lady? Inari Kainiko. Well, I'm sorry. What was that? Inari Kainiko. Oh, Inari, how are you? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks for for coming and joining us. Uh, yeah, Colorado Festival of Horror is coming up September 9th through the 11th, and we can't wait. To have you guys out and join in the festivities. We cannot we, wait to be there. Yes. This will be our first time coming to Colorado. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna try to make the most of it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we can't wait to show you uh you know Colorado, uh all the majestic uh you know mountains and stuff, and you know, hopefully it won't be too warm in September. Uh I'd imagine you guys are experiencing a little bit of a heat wave out there too. Oh yes. yes. It is it is very, very hot. Baltimore. I think we're gonna set fire to one another right now because yeah. we're so close. I rub too much. <laughs> Bal Baltimore is on fire. Oh man. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, it's uh it's it's so treacherous. Uh, I, I feel for anybody that that's stuck in the heat. Uh man. yes. But well, uh, feel for us because we're stuck in the heat. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. What What are you guys doing to stay cool? Uh, air conditioner. Air conditioner. <laughs> well, see, the air conditioner works everywhere else but in our room. Mm -hmm. So oh, no. the parents are frying while the kids sit in luxury and cool air. So oh, oh. they're staying cool. We are frying. Yeah, that's oh. true. We We are frying. Oh. But, Staying hydrated. Yes. yes. Always stay hydrated. That um, goes without saying. And, and basically praying for relief. I, I'm looking forward to September. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you guys usually experience a little bit of a temperature drop? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it depends. Um, it does depend. September is a weird month, so sometimes it'll still be, like, hot. Right. Super hot, and other times it'll it'll just cool down automatically, and you'll feel that fall, that nice right. fall weather. Yeah. So right. we don't know what we're gonna get yet, but I'm hoping for the fall weather when September hits. That's I remember the good old days when I was a much younger man. Fall was actually an entire season, season. as <laughs> opposed to like we've been getting like a few weeks of fall. Like what is this? Winter will come early. Summer will will end late and we get no fall. Yeah, no fall. Sucks. A little tiny bit of spring. I know. Oh, no, I know. Yeah, we 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 kind of experience that uh you yeah, know out here unless you actually live in the mountains and you might actually get some seasons. Wow. <laughs> okay then. So you still get good speed, though. <laughs> Check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Monique, we, we've had you on the show uh, last year. Uh, you know, we you, I think the last time I, I interviewed you, I was you know, held up in bed with a broken leg and stuff. And uh, yeah, it, it's so good to have you on again. 
And I'm, I'm happy to be back. I really am. I'm so excited about, you know, this whole thing, like just being on the show, uh, coming to Colorado for the film fest, for the festival, for the horror convention, yeah. horror convention festival. I call it all the same. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's because, it's because Shakespeare Shitstorm is screen, screening and then the convention. So I keep calling it a festival, but it says that. It's a, uh, you know, it, 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 well, yeah, of course, uh, with Colorado Festival of Horror, you know, it's festival in, in, in name, but uh, yeah, not quite a film festival, but you know, yeah, we're so excited and privileged to be able to screen Shakespeare's Shitstorm, you know, at, at the Sea Center on September 8th. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be exciting to have you and Lloyd out and and everybody's families too to, to experience that on, on, on the, a big screen. You know, yes. that's so cool. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, and, and it's always good to see Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd, yeah. you know, it's, I love seeing Lloyd. I feel like he was responsible for uh, my horror career. You know, he and Debbie Roshan really uh, helped put me out there. And Dee Snyder. And, <laughs> well, Dee Snyder did Fangoria Radio, but like Debbie actually referred me for films and Lloyd actually took a chance and said, Hey, I want you to do an intro to pot zombies. And, you know, just really taught me so much that first time that I got to work with him, which was like a really crazy experience. You, yep. <laughs> you and that stuffed animal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I owe everything to Lloyd. So I'm always happy to see him. And we've seen, we've screened a movie with him three or four times now. And it's always a different experience every time. And, and watching myself is, I never like watching myself on the screen, but I yeah. did enjoy watching this. Nice. That, that's cool. What, if you don't mind me asking, what do you think was, was the difference for this one? Um, I think I put a I put a whole lot of work into to this one. Most of the films that I do, um, as you may or may not know, are like cameos. So right. you know, I get to see myself for a second, and I may, you know, be doing something just really crazy. This time, I actually got to. Uh, I had dialogue. You know, I had fight scenes. It was just so much. It was so involved. I got to rehearse. Shakespearean dialogue. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shakespearean uh, dialogue. That's mostly what I did. I was kind of like the straight person in the film. And it was just nice to be able to uh, see myself pepper throughout the film and actually show that I can act. Nice. Yeah. So even though the film is totally crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm like the, I'm the straight person in it, so I'm I'm just like that voice of kind of the voice of reason, right? In it, um, Lloyd has a huge message, you know, in that film is which is one of the reasons why I like people to actually you know watch it if you can get past like all of the stuff <laughs> in it. But, um, traumaism. Yes. <laughs> traumaism. I think this was, I think this was, was almost kind of, almost next level uh, traumarific. Yes. So no, I, I, I'll, I just, I'll just say it like that. But yeah, I really enjoyed um, being able to see myself flourish, I guess, on, on screen. Cool. So this, that's why this is different. Yeah. No, that uh, yeah, we we knew you could act. I mean, I've seen you in in uh, several films, and you're always so fun on on uh, on camera. You know, whether it's yeah, you know, dramatic piece or acting in something. You know, you know, with Floyd, uh, Floyd, Lloyd, uh, <laughs> and uh, um, you know, it, I, I I find it you know very dynamic. Yeah, you know, yeah. At the same time, you know, very much like uh, your career in wrestling as a wrestling personality. And you know, we we've talked about uh, you know, your career doing that, it organizing like these big events and stuff too, yes. doing all these behind the scenes. Yeah, it's it's almost like having ten kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. You, you 
guys are super parents. <laughs> it, Holy it, it, it really truly is. It's, it's for me. It was not much different. He, <laughs> if you've ever come to one of our events and and saw how like how I have to like organize it. Yeah. Especially if it's something that involves cooking, he goes, I'll cook. And then you 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 do everything else. Okay. So he'll cook as promised and cook this big, huge dinner. And I have to organize everything and everybody in every way. And running yeah. like the running the the shows were about the same. Oh. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. I, I, I can't imagine. Um you know, Anthony, if you could, you know, coming back to you, yeah, you know, tell us a little bit about about yourself and you know how you became a writer. How did I become? Well, in all honesty, I don't think that uh, we become anything. I think we are. Okay. You know, uh, I I'm nice. I'm a somewhat rounded artist. I'm an illustrator. I'm a writer. I'm a photographer. Uh, this one claims I'm an actor because I've he done some is. acting. He is. <laughs> no, it's not because he's done some acting. It's because he can actually act. There's a big difference, but, and I am a fan of him with that. But, uh, you know, before I could write, period, all my art was about telling stories, even as a little kid. Yeah. So that was basically the ultimate step into that. So I started writing as a teenager. Never stopped. Cool. Cool. And and you've got a couple uh, books of uh, poetry out. If am I not uh, mistaken? Uh, two two books of poetry so far. Uh, two novels Ooh. and a book of short stories. Oh man, that, it's it's quite the the range. You know, when you're when you're writing. You know what? Uh, you know what subjects? You know or genres are you focusing on? Do you think? I, I like to think of I like to think of my genre as uh, pulp fiction. It's it's basically mm. it's basically a marriage of horror, action, sci-fi. You know, I, I like to get a blend happening, and. Anything over a few uh, <laughs> a few words start to become that because that's always been my influence. Yeah, you know, between comic books and, and horror films. Yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, so, that's cool. So, uh, did you grow up, um, you know, watching a lot of horror movies, reading a lot of comics? Absolutely, a absolutely. In fact, I am. Um, in some circles, what is considered a certified nerd. I am, a I am a comic book nerd. I am a film nerd. I'm an art nerd. He is the cyclopedia of nerd. <laughs> I'm, I'm, t I'm telling you, and it doesn't stop at nerddom, but yeah, where that's concerned, he is the uh, book of information that you go to. I'm into uh, some pretty heavy sciences, too. Yes. So, you know. I, I'm I, I'm almost Leonard on <laughs> on Big Bang Theory. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, I I love that show. That that, that was so much fun. Yeah, that, I I think that was for a lot of pop culture. That was something on on network television that so many people, yeah, you know, us geeks and nerds could actually connect over, but also introduce to a larger, you know, uh, demographic or a larger exactly. audience. It, it really, it, it was really a, a nice segue for what was beginning to happen in the world of entertainment. You yeah. know, so many people were going to see comic book movies, were right. watching these epic Marvel comics films and really didn't know the source material that there were people out there who cared about it in the first place. Absolutely. Right. And Big Bang Theory was a nice little segue between us and them where that's concerned. I still say it took slivers of our life because 
damn it if we're not Penny <laughs> and Leonard. Yes, sometimes. we've had some Penny we, and Leonard moments. I mean, <laughs> and even the whole actress doing the indie stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And some of the stuff I say to him sometimes is not intellectual at all. I will admit that. And he kind of looks at me like, well, you're cute. So I'll let that slide. <laughs> the, like like the episode of the gorilla, uh, the the thing where she's attacked by the gorilla. She's in the film attacked by the gorilla in the shower. I was like, that could be one of your movies. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, it's, it's funny because like... Uh, yeah, you know, so much of pop culture, yeah, you know, does exist around superheroes and comic book uh, inspired, you know, content right now. And yeah, yeah I, I remember like yeah, uh, you know, you go back thirty uh, years ago, or or you know, uh, outside of the Batman Superman stuff, and so much of that was still considered like B movies, you know, like yeah, like the Roger Corman Fantastic yeah. Four that never got released or. You, you've got uh, some 1970s uh, TV-friendly Spider-Man episodes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Captain right. America, the first, the, well, not oh. the first iteration, but yeah, you know, the they tried to revamp Captain America for TV, but and it, it worked for a little while. Yeah, for uh, you know, with with him and his motorcycle, and uh, had a yeah. little transparent shield and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's it, it's. It's interesting to to see how like uh, you know these these B films became you know the yeah you know, the standard right just with a yeah. bigger budget and, and better technology. Well, also I I think a lot of the writing is better, mm -hmm. but I think it's only better because they started uh, they started having writers who actually care about the material, right? Yeah. You know, they were fans of the original material and they're not just rewriting it. They're, they're adapting it like any novel mm -hmm. or, or, or any like series that's going from prose to screen. And putting yeah. their love and passion. Into and they're putting it. their love and passion. In. Right. You know, looking at Iron Man, when, when Marvel first did the Iron Man movie. I, first of all, I was shocked that they, they would have gone with Iron Man, period. Right. Because, right. you know, it, I, I joked that it was me and six guys was like, hey, Iron Man, yay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not. But, but just the storytelling, mm -hmm. the performances, you know, were brilliant. And for them to keep that energy and tempo going. Is yeah. so important. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Now, uh, you know, your daughter sitting next to you, Monique. <laughs> what kind of art is she making today? Because you know, I, I see you, you know, posting all kinds of incredible things on, on uh, you know, your social media. You know, just champion, uh, you know, your your kids and all the cool yeah. things that they do. What what type of art do you do, Nari? Um, I do all different types. I do anime and realistic mostly. Oh, cool. But there's some other styles. <laughs> kind of, I feel like she kind of does whatever she feels. Um, my husband said it best before. He said he loves that she doesn't stick to just one thing. You right. know, she's not in a box. She didn't put herself in a box. Mm. She right. does what she feels like doing and she will tackle things that she had no idea whether she can do it or not yeah. until she tried it. And she, she works in a, a multiple of media. She's not married to a media. Yeah. And she does mixed media. Yeah. So. Absolutely. She, she's the one that, you know, growing up would always make these weird things because I always say to them, you know, I was like, I feel left out sometimes because you guys are the artists and I can draw a mean stick figure with boobs, right? <laughs> like, I, I do the whole little smile with the dot and everything. Like, I go yeah. all out for my stick figure. But, um, <laughs> but I think where my art lies is in, you know, physical medium because I used to make masks and right. paint them and cool. do things like that. So I kind of moved over to resin. Now with her, 
she's like stolen, borrowed my glue guns <laughs> and would like come back and make these things that look like crystals or, you know, yeah. or, and we're like, how did you do that? She's like, oh, I, I got bored and took some of my eyeshadow and, you know, your glue gun and Ooh. made this. I was like, oh, like, who does that? <laughs> who just sits around and makes stuff like that? So she's always been creative. She needs the supplies to be able to mm -hmm. fuel her creativity, but she does this every day. She like lives and breathes yeah, art she, she, every day. She wakes up and falls asleep to it. it yep. it's, it's really, it's really her north. It's her true north. Nice. As as parents, you know, this has got to you know, absolutely you know excite you to to be able to support your kids in this way. Absolutely. Oh, it's an absolute must. We we've done it with uh, each and every one of them, whatever it is, wherever their heart is leading them. We've tried our best, you know, no matter what our resources, to make sure we we fuel that. Um, and we're always their biggest cheerleaders. I mean, our oldest daughter was not that she wanted to be a cook, but she loved cooking and yeah. had been in the kitchen behind him since you know she was little and because he is the cook in the family just in case you didn't pick that up he <laughs> is the cook in the family i can cook but he is the cook right. and she used to you know she wanted to learn she just yeah. wanted to know and he just finally said hey look you know i'll show you and now she's a great cook so i miss some of those lessons uh <laughs> and our, our son yes you could bake you're a baker our Ooh. son Chance, who's 25 now, was published was a published photographer at 11. It was nine. It was nine. Yes, it was oh, nine. Wow. Yeah. At nine, <laughs> and you know, I I had him fiddling around with me with the camera. I taught him. I taught him the basics. Mm -hmm. Taught him how to go forward. Oh man. Uh, and he took that and ran. Oddly enough, it was a picture that he took of me in one of the Spanish magazines. I can't remember whether it's GQ or it was Vogue. Spanish. Some one of one of one of I think yeah, it was Italian. Uh, maybe oh. Italian. One of those. Uh, it, it was probably Italian. One of those did an article uh, or a write up about horror. Okay. And and scream queens, and they contacted me and asked me um, if they could use the picture, and it, you know it was. It, it was Chance's picture. So, you know, I said, sure. So they did the write up and I couldn't understand what they wrote, but <laughs> I heard that it was good. So I just, uh, <laughs> I it think we still, we still may have it somewhere around here. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome. You know, if only every kid had, you know, parents that were as you know supportive as, as you, you two are. I mean, you, you guys are superheroes. As well as super parents, uh, you know, it, it's it's absolutely wonderful, and uh, you know, and we can't wait to you know, to see uh, you know the art you know um, that your daughter is making in person, you know, at, at Coral Horror, <laughs> right? I think she gets so excited when you you see how she just pepped up. You you ask her some art questions because she loves talking about art as long well, as it's just art. And, <laughs> And with with that, uh, Monique too, like uh, you know, her using you know your eyeshadow and 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 uh, the you know, the tools in the makeup kit. How abstract is that? That's absolutely delightful. It really is. I mean, she's also done these very very uh, different mm -hmm. uh, things with her face, where she will take again my makeup. Yeah and do all of these designs on her face. One day she did a, like a colorful leopard print. I've posted it numerous times before. This was a few years back. She just got bored and it's always, she starts when she's bored and she took like my, my eyeshadow, my eyeliner, some other stuff. And she literally made colorful leopard print all over her face and took some of my eyelashes and put them on. <laughs> But it looked phenomenal. And I was like, what made you do this? She was like, I don't know. I was just trying it. And the, this is this is what she comes up with. And I said, from now on, I need a picture before you wash anything off. 
and then uh, there, then, there, then there came the paint markers, which is why uh, now she has her own paint markers. Yes, because yes. She, would, she would come to the door with her younger siblings, her two younger siblings, and they would have, for lack of a better term, uh, hieroglyphics cool. drawn onto oh. their skin. Yes. Wow. <laughs> And he, he keeps telling them, you know, that's dangerous. It seeps into your skin. Don't, don't write on yourself with the with the paint mark. But yeah. but they would she did it all up her arm as sleeves one day and it was beautiful. But I was like, what did you do that with? You know, it took like a week right. to clear all I used to do. But this is the creativity that that right. they all have. I mean, um our nine year old. The two of them are thick as thieves. They do the art together. She's the other one that I post about yeah. when yeah. I, I post uh, their art. So she's teaching her nice, so that she can, you know, be a better artist as well. But she is just a ball of creativity. She reminds me of, you know, how I met him. Like when I first met him and, and everything that he did and everything he touched just turned to art. That's what she does. So you know, she got it naturally. That's that's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, let's turn it to uh, you, uh, Monique uh, and uh, Anthony. Let's turn it to to you guys. How did you guys meet? <laughs> Was it a Comic Con? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, you, you want to tell the condensed version, or I, I will tell the condensed version. Yes. Okay. That, is a, that is a long, overdrawn. Long as you we, say we, what you said. We <laughs> uh, were dating people that the other one knew. Okay. And so, her her boyfriend at the time was like, well, I'm, I, I'm really going to be glad to have you meet my girlfriend. Now, again, like I said before this interview, I'm kind of, uh, I've been called kind of a, what was the asshole, right? <laughs> so, asshole, tactless. Stuff. Tactless. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if you've ever seen anything that writers write about writers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> some of that's true. <laughs> so I meet her for the first time, and she's literally a hundred pounds, maybe a hundred and five. And just to really get under the guy she's with skin, because I, I used to pick with him a lot. <laughs> I said to her, "Wow, you're just a stick figure with huge tits, aren't you?" <laughs> and that was the first thing I said to her. And uh, you know, I. Considering where the relationship went a few years later, I probably would have went a different way. <laughs> but you know, at the time, it, it seemed like the thing to do. Well, actually, that was probably one of the things that made me really think about him when I was single was mm -hmm. that he was just so straightforward. I mean, we became friends. Yeah. So we, you know, we were, we were still friends. And then we both broke up, you know, with our girlfriend, boyfriend around the same time and yeah. just kind of comforted one another and was just there for one another. But I was always thinking about the fact that, you know, he wouldn't lie to me. He just straight up in my face, never <laughs> met me, just said I was a stick figure with boobs. So while I'm not saying that it, it was like a come on line or I was like, I liked it. I just appreciated the honesty. Yeah. Even though when he first said it, I wanted to punch him, <laughs> even though I didn't know him because I was sensitive about my, my weight mm -hmm. being so skinny and he just blurted it out <laughs> and everybody laughed and it was so funny. The joke was on Monique. Oh. Uh, but that was actually how we met. And then, you know, we really became best friends. And yeah. then the next thing you know, we were together. And then, like, soon after that, we just started having children. <laughs> like, oh. really soon after that. And it just wow. boom, 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 kept yeah. going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Then we got to 10. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a fantastic story. I think, uh, you got the clip yeah. notes, trust me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's better that way. Yeah, yeah. The clip notes are better. Right, right. <laughs> the condensed version. I, yes. I, I hate to say it, but it, it almost seems like uh, you know, stick figure with uh, with boobs is a drinking game too. Uh, yeah, it it, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm I, I've had I've had to tell this story before. Yeah, yeah. So many times. And and, and I I really like I I really feel the looks I get from like large groups of women like. <laughs> but I'm like if 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 I'm here like I'm here so clearly. I wasn't that bothered by it because I'm here. It, it, it was crass, but it was meant to be crass. Yeah. You, yeah, Monique, you've had your chance to leave. So yeah, clearly you're still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh yeah, it, do you find that it's you know the uh you know the passion for each other and the, the creativity, you know, in, in the world that you guys have created for each other that really you know seems to be the glue? I would I would very much say so because I feel like when we're when it's when it's not like that we our creativity is so I don't know it's I don't know how to explain it it's just kind of different we've just now recently become so uh cohesive with and allowed all of our creativity to kind of mesh together cool. to collaborate do collaborative you know, art stuff, just like what I was showing you, you know, before we were on air that I'm making these, these resin things. It's because of, you know, my book of nerddom right here, we were sitting down talking and we just kind of uh, came up with things and then his books, you know, making resin art from it and just everybody just kind of bouncing, create creative ideas off of one another as a family, as a family, we have other artists and, yeah. And singers and everybody's just been collaborating with one another right. you know our daughter who's a singer comes to him all the time and she wants to do you know a project with him and it's oh, it's wow. that that's been i feel like that's what keeps us kind of going no matter what's happening in our world because yeah. we've had a lot of craziness in our world but that's our happy place i think that's everybody's individual happy place and when we could come together, that's a, a, a source of happiness as well as to be able to do that as a family. How many people do that? How many people can do that? That's right, true. right. I, I think, uh, yeah, not, not too many families for, for certain, you know, do that or, or can do that. But, uh, it, yeah, to me, it sounds like you've got this, you know, cohesive, uh, you know, family that, you uh, is its own, you know, functioning studio, like a mini Disney or, uh, you know, a mini Jim Henson, you know. Disney money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great. Disney, Disney money would be really good. I know. It, we, could, we could really fuel this mother if we had the Disney money. Right, right. Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, no, it, 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 it's really encouraging and just awesome to, to hear, you know, hear about all this. Um, let's go ahead, you know, talk about, uh, some of the projects you guys might be, uh, you know, working on now. Uh, you know, Anthony, uh, are you working on any new books? Um, I'm actually working on several books. Sweet. Uh, I'm, I'm actually transferring some of my older screenplays into graphic novels. Oh yes. Cool. Um, one of them is really complicated and that's the one I started with first because it's going to take a while to get through. And I'm, I'm writing two other novels. I'm getting back into the novels. Cool. Sitting there watching him do the art mm -hmm. for that is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I, I'm glad that you had asked that question because, you know, one of the things that we do sometimes is while I'm making resin, he's over there doing art. And sometimes we're just, you know, trying to find something funny or entertaining while our brains are running a mile a minute doing what we're doing individually, but in the same space, yeah. you know, and um, I, I can't help but to stop what I'm doing a lot of the times that I keep glancing over there 
because at first I'll just see something that just looks like one color. And then the next thing you know, it's all of this detail. And I'm like, wow. And then the kids will see it and they go, wow, that's, that's all we got is wow. Because, you know, I, I think, you know, I didn't know if he thought he lost his touch, but it it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would definitely say, no, he hasn't. And I, I love watching all of that. Thank you. Uh, yes. That's wonderful. Yeah, uh, yeah, Anthony, hopefully you bring, uh, you know, some, some of uh, your, uh, you know, some of the stuff that you're working on as far as the graphic novel. Uh, I, I, will, I, will bring some, I will bring some work. I will bring, in fact, I'm, I'm sure considering how much I have to do, I'll probably be doing work in, yeah. in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. It well, it'll be nice, you know, because you know, a little bit more fresh air, maybe. Um, definitely higher altitude to so bring oxygen. <laughs> Lord, I'll Lord. keep that in mind. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Please tell him to bring some of his art too, because I keep telling yeah, him. I will bring art. Yeah, I will bring some photography as well. Yay! Good. Okay, I'm good. Happy. Yeah, and and of course, your 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 daughter's going to be bringing some art. Uh, oh, that's yeah. that's for sure. Excellent. What what are you working on? I'm working on horror stuff. Excellent. Excellent. And, um, horror and art. So it begins again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's really it's really crazy though. Having, I love that we allow them the artistic expression, but I'm not going to lie. There's been some days where you know when we close our door. I go, what the hell was on her mind? <laughs> you know, like the, the the earrings, you can't really see it, but I mm -hmm. have, um, these earrings are from one of her art pieces. Oh, cool. So I take a lot of her art and his art, I'm still in the process of taking in our other daughter and I turned them into earrings. But this says, kill me. It's like a, a, like a devil woman and it says, kill me across it. And I was like, that is so awesome. That is so cool. That in my head, I was like, I hope she's okay. <laughs> so I, I, went, I, I, I went in the room and I said, babe, you, you know, what was on her mind? He was like, she's an artist. She's expressing herself. I said, is she expressing kill me? He said, no, no, you know, you know, I'm, I'm dark. I can get dark. Sometimes it's exercising those demons. So when I saw her later, I was like, you're good, right? She was like, yeah, why? I was like, okay, no, she's good. Yeah. But it was just, she, it was the paranoid mom thing. But, but you she know? also grew up in a generation where everybody who has a thought in their head puts it on uh, Facebook or right. Instagram. Yeah. How yeah. many times have you run across somebody's post that you don't know from Adam's house cat and it's like, right. fuck my life. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to be run over by a train and you're like, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, no, energy, yeah. that energy, that yeah. energy is out there and it's always been an artist's responsibility to translate all of it. Absolutely. Which is why we don't, we don't, stop them from from being able to express themselves you know i mean she came to me both of them came to us with a drawing on paper one day and the nine-year-old like has pubic she she drew pubic hair uh, on a woman and i said um <laughs> Can I ask what was this inspired from? She was like, I don't know. I just felt like drawing it. I was like, okay, this yeah. is just this is just weird for me to say good job. Right, right. <laughs> but, you know, it's, I'm just saying this is the this is the place that my head goes as a mom because the art is good. Yeah, but I still have to ask the questions, troubleshoot it in my head, in my own head. Absolutely. You know, and I'll, I'll ask them and you know, she'll tell you. I never say, well, don't do that. You know, or don't draw that again or, you know, anything like that. I just want to know sometimes what is this inspired by? What, right. What's the motivation? Yeah, you yeah. know, and I just, the fact that, you know, I love that she started drawing women of all shapes, mm -hmm. uh, all colors, all different styles like just she draws everyone because she believes in representing everyone 
And I love that. But I was like, what inspired that? And she was just like, I, you know, I just want to draw people like as they are. Yeah. And I was like, that is the most simple and most beautiful thing that I've heard. Carry on. Yeah. It's, it, it's nice to, it's nice to create art that, uh, that doesn't make it look like you live in a vacuum. Absolutely. Right. There's something that's, you know, I mean, a lot of artists are guilty of it. Uh, I have to look at some of my work in retrospect mm -hmm. because, you know, I mean, there are so many lives that aren't represented yet, but yeah. Yeah. I'm not done. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. so given yep. the time, they'll show up. Yeah, that, that's a that's a beautiful thing about creativity and art is it can be very therapeutic. And you know, it sounds like you know you as 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 parents are are able to you know a, approach that with with the kids and uh, open up that dialogue. You know, yeah, like you know, how does this uh, how is this inspired? You know, and and have those deeper conversations. You know, so many you know parents are having a hard time approaching those those topics you know with their kids you know growing up yeah. and facing adolescence and stuff and you know it's it's a vulnerable time but uh yeah yeah like i said you guys are superheroes for you know uh you know what you guys do what? and, and <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> so she's, wait say that say that louder she's a superhero <laughs> yes she don't want to be left. You're not a superhero parent, though. <laughs> <laughs> What's your superpower? Um, telekinesis. Telekinesis. Wow. Nice. Wow. This escalated quickly. Yeah. It. It kind of that uh, Jean Grey meets uh, yeah Scarlet Witch type thing, huh? Um. Without leaving this chair, give me a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Now you do that. We got to talk. Wait, you no, feel no, like you just appeared in my hand. How did that happen? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I I watched watched the coffee coffee come here. I'm jumping. I'm jumping. I'm running. I'm gone. <laughs> now, oh, see, this I, is what we deal with. See, she's opening up. If the, if the cup of right. coffee floats in here, I'll be fine with that. If it's hot, then I will be extremely puzzled. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, fire starter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fire, yeah. There yeah there, there's always fire. that. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's that's awesome, uh, Monique. Uh, you're you're currently uh, you know promoting uh, you know Shakespeare's Shitstorm, and yes. oh, also you know drinking game. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, what what other projects are you working on? Uh, well, there is uh, there was projects that I worked on in the past few months, and I'm kicking myself in the butt because I don't remember the names. <laughs> but um, but actually, like this su this Sunday, it's uh, my head is all over the place. Um, you know, just working on the resin stuff and you shot from Ohio, not too long ago. Yeah, that was wait what. <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, that was, wasn't that last year, though? Was that last year? It's all um, bleeding together. Yeah, um, he's talking about a film that I, a film project that I worked on in Cuyahoga Falls, uh, Ohio, um, okay. called The Beautiful Ones, which is, you know, from a Prince uh, song that I got to do some, some acting in as well. And I also got to, like, chop a head off. Um Wait. <laughs> no, that was that was really awesome because I had never done that before in a film. Um, <laughs> and also, I got to do my first um, water death scene. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, not my first, my, my first one where I really had to float. Oh, wow. Without <laughs> any props or any anything because, you know, yeah, you're cool. dealing with an indie film. And yeah. it's really it's much harder to do than people think, especially wearing a leather jacket. Oh, geez. That, um, but that. I somehow was able to accomplish that. So I was really proud of that. Um, Saint and I are actually 
uh, doing a film this Sunday, a zombie movie. He didn't even tell me what the name of it was. He oh, just yeah, asked me that's to. That's right. I forgot. He, he, he just asked. He just asked me to be in it. But um, I'm going to be zombified. Nice. And just you know, have some fun. And Saint has the choice of whether or not he wants to be a zombie or take pictures or take pictures as a zombie. I mean, it, it, okay, it'll be totally up to what he decides to do. It wouldn't be the first time where we went to go do a movie and then he ended up being a zombie. Or as a matter of fact, you, you killed me. Yeah, in that oh, wow. movie. Um, Postmortem America. Postmortem America. Yep, he wasn't even supposed to be in the movie, and so not only was he a zombie, but he's the one that caught and killed me. That sucked. <laughs> oh wow! So it's it <laughs> like you guys get to you know uh, play around uh, together on uh, on film set. Uh, oh, absolutely! If you know he he's been responsible for. Um, helping me learn a lot about myself when I'm trying to really become a character and I'm kind of stuck. Okay. He's been there almost, I mean, almost like a, like a coach would, but he would give me this great advice because he's just a wealth of information and I'd be able to go back into it and, and actually accomplish what I set out to accomplish. And if he wasn't on set, I, I can't say for certain that that would have been the case because who would I have gone to to get that insight in the first place? So um, he's been a mainstay on a lot of the sets where he's taken pictures and his photography ended up being the one used because he's a great photographer as well. And we'll do photo shoots off to the side. So yeah, that's always been a thing. That's how he ended up in a lot of films. That's why I was really happy when he got cast to do something that I wasn't even a part of mm -hmm. and I got to watch it and I was like, whoa, how do you not think you're not a good actor? Did you not see you? But I do the same thing. Right. So, you know, I guess I can't really say too well, much. Well, I think there's a difference between like people who are capable of performing mm -hmm. and then there's another level I agree. Of, of, of actor like and, and that's something that you and your brother have mm. you know there, there's a there's a different level and I, i'm well tony's on a different level than i am well tony's on a different level than most <laughs> most actors but yeah, yeah but this is this is this is the stuff that i'm talking about though and you know, while I can agree with that, I just mm -hmm. you know want you to to you are an actor. You know, you you've taken these different roles, and even though you're like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this, you embodied it, and people haven't even been able to see um, some of the work that I'm most <laughs> proud of you doing because it hasn't come out hasn't yet, come out. and we don't know if it's gonna see Never the light of day. <laughs> but you know, if you if you ever do a reel, you need to get like the footage of those things, like when you play Jace. Yeah. Um, he's a great actor. And yeah. I think one of the reasons why he's a great actor is because he's a great writer. And sometimes he, he, he understands the nuances of, you know, the characters or he'll create something himself or right. create a backstory himself, which is what's hard for me to do a lot of the times when people don't give me backstories for characters. He can do that. He's a writer and he has an overactive imagination and boom, there you go. Right. So I, I do have an overactive imagination. <laughs> Excellent. That, that it, and those are some of the best things. You have big feet. <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to say something that was gonna shock her, but it's true, it's not a lie. Your feet are bigger than mine. Oh. I mean, that toe is going wild. What is happening there? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're focusing so much on the toe. Now you're, you're I'm like, hey, we'll show it. You don't have to. Don't have to. <laughs> no, don't show it. Don't yeah, show don't, 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 don't have to show it. <laughs> oh, that's that's, she has an un, a unlotioned, <laughs> unlotioned foot. So. Yeah, wow. I love you. Don't be embarrassed. I do too. <laughs> Two of them. No, well, I I have some of the ugliest feet ever, so I I feel like I could I could talk about 
other other people. Her feet aren't ugly. <laughs> Mine are toe up. And, oh, and, and suddenly now I wish I had a drink and a cigar <laughs> so I could completely be George Burns. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. This this mug just showed up in my hand. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Put that cigar in dad's hand. Oh, I, I I absolutely love talking to you guys. You're 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 so fun, and and uh, you know you're talking about art and creativity, and uh, so passionate about everything that you do. Uh, you know, real quick, uh, you know, where can we uh, go to you know find uh, you know, more of your work? Uh, his work. Oh, uh, sorry, directed to all three of you. Oh, oh, well. Right now, Amazon and the store. Yeah, Amazon and our Etsy shop. Uh, so I I just asked him if he would let me, you know, put, you know, he's willing to let go of some of his paintings so I could put them on. But I know he'll let me do the prints for sure. Uh, but all of our stuff is collectively at the Etsy shop. Everybody has their own store section. Um, and everybody has a blurb about what they do and, you know, what you can expect to see in the section of the store. So we want, we intend on putting his books there as well. Uh, so are you, are you mimicking me? <laughs> so you can find all of our all stuff the, at our Etsy shop. It's called the Thomas Kingdom. So if you, so if you look up, <laughs> if you look up the Thomas Kingdom, you'll find all of the social media uh, related to it. And that's where everybody's stuff is. And on, on Amazon, it's kind of hard to find some of his books because for some reason, when you put in Anthony St. Thomas, uh, <laughs> there's so many other people's books that show up well, that is not Anthony I, St. Thomas. I have, I, have the, I have the distinction of being named after two saints and right. saint in the middle of those two names. So if you look up Anthony St. Thomas, you get churches, you get you get tent revivals, you get spiritualists, you get exorcists, you know. <laughs> but but uh, the link, the direct link to be able to buy his books on Amazon is on the Etsy shop as well, uh, under his name, because I put everybody's links um there as well. I put everybody's everything so that you can get to people separately where you can, you know, see what we have to offer collectively. And the film stuff was usually available at any any convention that one that of us is yeah. one of us is yeah. at. There's a lot of stuff on streaming services uh as well. Um yeah. if you guys want to see something interesting that I did that nobody I think ever really saw, it was Spade, it was episode 12, I think. If you put in Spade episode 12 in YouTube, Mm -hmm. um i'm i'm in that episode and i really enjoyed filming that one that it's nowhere but youtube so if you want to check it out there's a lot of work out there there is yeah there it is yeah you you've got uh you know monique you have an amazing you know body of work when you go to your imdb page it just it it goes on it's uh it's really fantastic well thank you Thank yeah. you. Oh, what is the um, Among the Dead? Well, she changed the name. Juliet Landau. Oh yes. So she I did, did a, I did a film with Juliet Landau. We had the the honor and privilege. Oh my God. To be on set with this woman in California, and we all became like friends. You know, uh, quickly. She, she's incredible. She's an incredible actress. Yes. She's an incredible person. So right. I um. I did a movie with her. It was supposed to be a place among the undead. Okay. But they what they did was they took some of the scenes, they made a movie, and now they're making a series, I think, called Undead. And I'm in the series, but uh I get to go to the virtual premiere of um the actual movie, which is August the seventh. And I'm excited because I'm I'm in a show that has Gary Oldman, and I said that's it, that's all. Nice, nice. that's yeah. all. Because yeah, because you know um, I love him as an actor. His abilities are just I, a lot of my favorite actors are well are 
men, male actors. I like. Well, but you like chameleons. I do. I do. And Gary Oldman is definitely. A he is. He Uh-oh. is probably one okay. of my favorite uh, chameleon actors. But um, but he's gonna be in a series, and he's also in the film. So uh, I had just spoken to her recently. She's just such a joy to be around. And she's and she's nice. And she is not insane mm-hmm. like Lucilla. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I sing her praises. We I think that was like the best couple of days that you know we had had on a on a set really where we just came in blindly not knowing anyone and left like we had, you know, we we adopted a new family. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. That that sometimes that's you know another beautiful thing with you know the set life, right? You know, is is creating that uh, that film family that you work with. Um, yeah, it doesn't always work out, but but you know when that happens, oh, such magic, right? Absolutely. Yeah, light in a bottle. Yeah, like yeah. like the Darkstone people. Yes, our Darkstone family. Oh. I was asking, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Oh, no. You sure? <laughs> Okay. Sleepy. <laughs> She's sleepy. It is late here for you guys. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say this. Yeah, thank you for being so generous with your time and coming on and, and chatting with me again. And and uh, yeah, we can't wait. Yeah, to have you guys out uh, for uh, the Shakespeare's Shitstorm screening at the Seat Center. Uh, <laughs> coming on sale. Uh, wait, there's something left in there. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that one. And, uh, and of course, you know, having uh, all you guys out for Colorado Festival of Horror, September 9th through the 11th. We can't wait Woo! to see your glowing faces in person. It'll be fantastic. Yay! <laughs> Sweet. Uh, around for a few minutes uh, while we sign off. But uh, yeah, again, thanks so much for for coming on and uh thank you for inviting us yes thank yeah. you we appreciate you oh thanks yeah we, we love yeah chatting with you monique and, and it's so great to, to connect with the rest of the family here so yeah thank maybe you. next time we'll have all 10 uh, that's a lot of miking <laughs> <laughs> yes it, it is it is but you can probably get half of us <laughs> Excellent, excellent. <laughs> All right. Uh, and to everybody that tuned in tonight, uh, thanks so much. And of course, to our friends at Mutiny Information Cafe, if you're going to start a revolution, make sure you're caffeinated. And of course, our friends at Hellfire Entertainment, thanks for rebroadcasting us on your social media and to Groovy TV. And of course, our friends at Alien Donut Films, to Bill and Angela over there, thanks for putting up with my shit. And then, uh, of course, uh, our producers, Stefan Santa Cruz and Amanda Armstrong, th- thanks so much for your help. And to everybody out there, uh, be good, be kind, help each other out during these tough times, and uh, stay spooky. Till next time, we'll see you later. Have a good night, everybody.